weekly in-depth view of agriculture up close. This is In The Field. Welcome to Gates Farms here in Hinesville, Arkansas. We're here to meet Stony Joe Gates, an independent contract farmer for Tyson Food. The age-old question of what came first, the chicken or the egg, is still being answered by many, but for Tyson Foods, it's the chicken. However, today we're going to learn all about the egg. Hello. Hi. Nice to meet you. I'm Jamie. Jamie Stony Gates. Welcome to the farm. Well, thank you so much. Well, Sony, thank you so much for welcoming us into yes. uh, your farm and into your uh, chicken houses today. So take me through, let's go to the beginning. Like, how did you all get started? What led you into the poultry industry? Well, we started in the poultry industry, my husband and I, about 20 years ago, and we were working in the equipment part of it. Um, we've retired from that, and now what we've done is we've bought the family farm, mm -hmm. which was owned by his father, Carl and Kathy Gates and uh, we stay here every day now and just uh, we're farming we have cattle we have a few horses we do have uh, four breeder houses we gather eggs every day and that has become our lifestyle <laughs> full-time job literally full -time farming. Yes. so as a breeder for tyson foods what's that mean what is your what does it mean to uh, what does the word breeder mean what the word breeder means is it is a different kind of word for gathering eggs. Our eggs that we gather are actually fertilized by the roosters that are in there with the hens now. Mm -hmm. These fertile eggs will then go to a hatchery and Tyson's will hatch them out and they will become the next generation of the broiler growers. So it's kind of a full circle where the baby starts out with us, mm -hmm. we send it in, it's hatched out, it then becomes into a broiler and um, then it's processed for meat later for consumption. This has been great for our family because uh, we do have family members that can work here with us. And as a mother, I'm here every morning when my daughter gets on the school bus. I'm mm -hmm. here every day when she gets off the school bus. So not only can I manage my family and still be with my family, but I can work and earn a living. Well, you mentioned your family, and let's talk more about them. You know, you're getting to work with your husband every day, but you're raising your children in this environment. What's that mean? I think they're going to be the next generation of poultry growers. Um, we have four different farms, so mm -hmm. each one of them kind of eyeballs a farm that they think that they would like to take over someday. They can picture a house yes. sitting nearby yes. soon. My children have um, been helping us on the farm ever since they were young. So by the time my children were seven, eight years old, tall enough to stand at a table, they were standing at a table gathering eggs. So take us uh, through your morning routines here in these houses. Early in the morning, these birds start their morning breakfast, if you will, <laughs> at 4.45 in the morning. That's early. We have a controller that comes on and it turns all the feeders on for them. It turns all the lighting on for them, ventilation. So the birds are actually eating for the first hour that they're up in the morning. And then we are down here to make sure that the mechanics are all correctly operating, make sure that everything has come on like it should, water and ventilation, and just overall observing the birds in the morning while they eat. That's a good time for us to be looking at them and make sure that everybody's okay. Mm -hmm. After that, then we come forward to the uh, controller in the front of our house. Mm -hmm. This controller operates everything that's in this house from the lighting to the ventilation, to the cooling system, to the waters and it's all on certain times. So this thing is pre-scheduled for when everything should come on. All the temperatures are set for the temperature that's happening outside. We want these birds to stay nice and comfortable during the day. And what's the so average temperature? The average temperature that we try to keep mm -hmm. is around 70 to 80 degrees. That seems to be a, a good Ideal. setting for the, for the mm -hmm. pans, yes. And so these are set up with a cool cell system so that if it gets too hot for them, this cool cell system comes on and it's just like an air conditioner for the poultry. <laughs> uh, the fans will run all day long and the fans purpose is to draw the air in there so their birds are all feeling a nice breeze at all times during the day. So once the birds have had breakfast, mm -hmm. it's time for the first gathering of three. So let's go see um, and learn about that process. Okay. Gates. She's been gathering eggs with us ever since she was tall enough to reach the table. <laughs> you can get a booster up for her. <laughs> yes, yes. What our purpose here is to gather the eggs three times a day. That way they are evenly taken off the belt. Mm -hmm. And what we are looking for is the best quality of eggs that there are no feathers, there's no dirt on these. So these are going to be premium hatching eggs for us, which we're going to put into this rack. 
this rack is then going to go into a cooler room and kept exact temperature until... And what temperature is that? We're going to keep that 70 degrees. 70 degrees. Yes. And we're going to keep it at that temperature until the Tyson food truck comes to pick those eggs up to then go to the hatchery. So she's going to be certainly out the, the most perfect eggs here. We also have what we call a plan B area here, which is any egg that we think might have some possible dirt or contamination mm -hmm. on it. These eggs are kept separate from the premium hatch eggs. They could still possibly hatch, mm -hmm. but we just don't want to mix the contamination in with our premium eggs. So the quality control you know starts here that's right that's right and when we're done then we just clean this whole area everything needs to be disinfected after each gathering the floors need to be swept we usually vacuum the floors every day three times we also disinfect the floor because we don't want these carts rolling on any possible feathers or contamination before they go into our egg room. So three times a day we'll be doing this and then we will keep track of how many eggs we get on each gathering, which we keep on a chart that Tyson Food provides for us. That chart gives our service techs the information when they come to see how many eggs we've gathered every day and how many call eggs we've had every day, how many chickens that we have lost and uh, he takes all that information, puts it in this computer, and then he lets us know where we are compared to all the other hatching farms. It's a good way just for everybody to know that we're doing great, we're where we should be, mm -hmm. we're following the averages, or if there's a problem, then he can see daily what we're doing and maybe he can help advise us to what we need to make a change on. Everybody here is trained on biosecurity. They are trained on animal welfare. We also have posters that Tyson Food provides us that we put on the walls. So speaking of that training, we also, coming here to your farm, went through animal welfare training to even step foot in this. And so part of that is um, the, the clothes you wear and, and things when you go into the houses. So I think you're going to take us um, into the houses next. So take us through when you don't wear your street clothes, no, when you're headed into the houses. So what do you change into? We change into scrubs. Those are the scrubs that are worn just specifically in these houses. We also have a set of boots that's worn specifically in this house. We have an area right outside our door, which we call the dirty area. That's where when you walk in with those boots and you observe your chickens and do your work, you come out and you stay on that mat and you do a shoe change. You take those boots off and you put your working shoes on. Mm -hmm. So we don't ever want that cross contamination of whatever we're walking on in there to be in here on the floors. It's just an extra caution to keep everything clean. You're constantly being educated on new practices, but they're right. um, keeping uh, keeping you educated, but also um, you're providing them with information so that they best understand the process that they're implementing. That's right, that's right. With raising these birds, Tyson comes out very often, and uh, the company will give us educational videos on making sure that we are handling the birds properly, make sure that the biosecurity is correct, make sure that we're still gathering correctly. Sometimes there needs to be changes made and they are very good to come out here and let us know what those changes are. It's just important that we all follow the same rules so we give these eggs the best possible chance to hatch out. 